uh, in 91. Um, both Pepper and Phil had been torn quite a bit, and we had always talked about trying to do, do a band kind of with a little bit of a Soundgarden influence and, you know, uh, just the, the, the New Orleans scene was changing, you know. It's like I played in, played with Kurt and with I Hate God. Basically started I Hate God because Kurt wouldn't play what I wanted him to play. He wouldn't <laughs> feed back and shit like that, you know. So it was like, well, fuck it. I'll just learn how to play guitar. Mm, nice. You know, and not making it out like it's that easy. But, but you know, it was just, to, to me, it was that experimental at the time. You know? mm. So, so uh, you know, and then Phil and Pepper wanted to start another band with, with like, cool vocals over, like, really slow and heavy stuff. And we got together and jammed, and it wound up being the most unique thing, probably one of the most unique things I've ever played. With. Well, Pepper and, Pepper and Phil were traveling a lot more than anybody else, so that's what they did. They basically gave out cassettes and said, check this band out that we heard about. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. kept it on the down low, and people, did, you know, the response was really good, you know, so, you know, and, and then, yeah, that's basically what happened. Man. Nice, man. Nice. wanted to make, because when we started the band, everybody was doing thrash, and there were a lot of fast bands, started really, we were into the Melvin shit, we wanted to start a slow band that would piss off all the fast bands, fans of the fast bands, and we, we pretty much achieved what we set out to do. Man. Well, I've, I've been playing drums since I was a kid, but guitar, I started playing with when I was like 18, and it was it was Blue Fourth Street, man. that that and Sabbath, you know, and, and uh, but 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 I adapted it to my own style because like I said, I started playing when I was 18. So mm -hmm. I only had four strings. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and, I mean, we were in the bands like the Swans, the Melvins, Trouble. Uh, you know, a, a lot of bands that weren't really that popular when we started. So, so it, it, it was kind of cool to have those influences under our belt that not many people were into. You know? <laughs> so, if I'd have to say one record, it would be Gluey Fort Street. Or St. Vitus, St. Vitus, you know, whatever, you know. That's Black awesome. A. Black Flag. That's what I grew up listening to. It's just I grew up in the '90s, fucking Black Flag. Well, Black Flag wasn't as much in the '90s, but you know, grew up listening to that. Melvins was huge, huge influence. I, I hear it in your music too, like the you know, just where the Melvins influence comes from. Totally, man. I mean, that, I mean that, when, when I first heard that record, they were doing something completely fucking different. I mean, Rain and Blood was popular when I got that record, and it was like. It's not that the Melvins purposely were like, fuck you, Slayer. It's just they just both happened to come out at the same time. Mm. And I picked fucking the Melvins, man. Because Sl Slayer, don't get me wrong, I love Slayer as well, but, but the Melvins were more like what we were into, you know? Mm -hmm. I, met, I met him through the guitar, through the guys in Shell Shock. You know, Mike, Mike saw every Black Flag tour that ever happened in New Orleans. You know, he's, he's been in the scene that long. And um, I just, me and Mike just hit it off, you know, and he would give me cassettes of Old Trouble. And, you know, Mike Williams turned me on to a lot of cool stuff. You know? And and we, we just kind of bonded on that and always wanted to start a slow, heavy band. You know? So uh, we became really good friends and have stayed good friends the whole time. After Katrina, after Katrina, the, the the entire city was black, and there 
uh, we played at a place called Juan Swine Burrito. And ironically enough, my wife supplied the generators. It wasn't my wife at the time. She supplied the generators, and, and we played a show with uh, I Hate God, Debris Incorporated, and uh, there was one other band. It might have been Paul Barrett. And, and uh, it was just killer because uh, here you are in a blacked-out city, but everybody came to this one show, you know, everybody that was home, and, and kind of, it was total unity. Oh, fuck, man. I... Considering what everybody been, had been through, you know, it was nice to uh, all get together and have, have a good night. I mean, uh, the, the, the place was completely gutted. Who, who else played on that on that Juan show? What are you fucking doing? Right Us, the three, and... Oh, the Poots, which, which is uh, the drummer for the Paul Bear's side band. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, but but it's kind of what everybody in the scene needed, you know. It, mm. it was the first show in New Orleans, first underground show that uh that happened, and it was really cool. Dude. course. I mean, it's me, Philip, and Kevin. And, yeah. You know, we, we, have, we have Steve and, and Blue, you know, so it, it is. It's, uh, but it's refreshing because everybody's, everybody's really into it and gives 100%. And uh, it, it, you know, it feels new again, which is really cool. So, but it, I mean, dude, you, you're talking about, you know, 15 years difference, you know, it's it, like we're, we're, we're different people, we're, we're more mature, you know, and I mean, don't get me wrong, Use Once and Destroy was, was probably one of the, it's a great record, you know? mm. yeah, but, but, uh, it's just, it's different, it, it's, uh, it's a lot faster process than that, as opposed to, hey, man, y'all it's a big difference. Man. I'm excited about that release because it's been what, 11, 12 years, something like that. Mm. So, and the record's, the record's really good. But, uh, we took our time, but we didn't take our time. And it, it, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's definitely super joint, 100%. Is there. Is there I met, I met Kirk. We, we both played in a band called Shell Shock. And, and uh, the guitar player killed himself. And afterwards, me and Kirk had become really good friends. And, uh, you know, we, we decided to continue on. And that's, uh, the record me and Kirk shared together was Carnivore Retaliation. That was like, that was like the big thing for us. And, Kirk really, really was feeling that record as far as like vocals and everything. Oh fuck! And, uh, and yeah, we were called the Slugs at that time, and you know basically, yeah, you know be became like this, which was really unorthodox for Kirk at the time. Well, I guess for both of us, but but you know, I mean the whole slow thing was untapped in New Orleans, you know, and to be able to be able to experiment with it and, and really write good I mean you gotta understand we like shit like that we also like old 70s love songs you know? mm. so so you, you blend that you blend like you know you blend those old songs with distortion you know and and major key and you know it's just it's a no brainer you know it, mm. it, it works Mixed with a little bit of trouble and just you know, I mean, Kirk, Kirk was Kirk was a Kirk's more of like a better player than people think he is. You know, he, he, he's really schooled, you know. So, so uh, yeah, like I said, we were just experimenting, and I was more into the Melvins and the feedback and stuff like that. So that's where I hate God comes in. You know, they they both kind of started conceptually 
same time. Okay. You know, but uh, but I moved to Atlanta in '91, and that's when I quit Crowbar and Craig Ludemach got involved. And uh, I hate God. It basically recorded our first record by him. So, uh, so yeah, it, it, it's a trip. What Crowbar and I hate God have turned into worldwide as far as as far as like you know, what people think of. Mm. You know, it's just kind of weird for us. Uh, it's, it's still to this day weird that people really dig it that much. That's just different. It's, it, it's no crazier than America. It's just different, you know. The UK is really good. Germany. I mean, dude, all of it's I mean, If you're in a band and you're somewhere fucking 5,000 miles away from home, you can't really say anything negative about it. You go out and represent yourself, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I've, I've been working on it for a while. It's it's kind of there's a there's a there's a country part, and then there's there's like a, a like a more doob interlude type. Nice. Part, you know? So I mean, I'm excited about about finally getting it out. You know, it's like it's something I've been wanting to do. I'm a little shy when it comes to that. You know. My singing and stuff. So I, I went up. I went to Shelton's house for a week, Hank three, and did five songs with him. Oh. And then I've also I've also done a couple songs by myself in my garage, and uh, and some songs. It should be interesting, man. It, it, it's something that I really want to put out. You know, it it's a lot different. It's not really metal. Hey, it, you know he's he's like he's like man. If you ain't doing nothing, and you want to come hang out and record some stuff, man. I was on I was on the airplane the next day, and I nice. went up there and, and had a great had a great time. Yeah, he's a great dude, man. That's. I'm not. Man. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, I'm not. That, you know. It, 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 Straight up, man. You know, it's like I, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a burnout. Just like you two dudes, man. Just likes music, dance. You know, it's like they, to me, that's just a, a, a weird adjective.